Hey there, AP Pre-Calc. This is Miss Adams from Flamingo Math. Today we're looking at Lesson 7 in Unit 2. We're going to talk about compositions of functions. You know this process of combining functions so that the output of one function becomes the input of another function. This is known as the composition of functions. The composition of function f with function g is defined as f of g of x, and we can write that with the compose open circle here, or we can write it using parentheses notation. It's read the f of g of x. Remember, this is not multiplication. We know that the domain of the composition is the set of all x in the domain of g so that the y value of g is in the domain of f. I want to make a note of that. I want to say that we need to restrict the outputs of g. So let's make a note over here for this last sentence about the domain. We need to restrict the outputs, that's the y values, of the inner function of g of x so that those values are in the domain of the outer function of f. Here's a paragraph about reading and the notation and all of the different ways that you need to understand that open circle symbol is telling us to compose two functions and not to confuse it with multiplication. When you read the notation from left to right, f of g of x, think of f composed with g at an x value. That's equal to the f of g of x. So f composed with g at x equals the f of g of x. There are two different functions when you compose f composed with g or g composed with f. They're not the same thing. Let's start by using the functions at, to find f of g of x and g of f of x and see if the compositions are commutative. So we're going to look at that ability. If I compose f with g, f of g of x. I'm taking the outer function f of x, which is 3x minus 5, and in place of the, the x variable where this x is here, I'm going to substitute the g function in its place, which is 4 minus x. Distributing that, we got 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times negative x minus 5. So 12 minus 5 is 7, and 7 minus 3x is the f of g of x. So we composed f composed with g at x. To do the g of f of x, we're going to do the g function, which is 4 minus x, and where the x is here, in the g of x function, we're going to put the entire f of x function in its place, which is 3x minus 5. So distributing the negative or subtraction, we have 4 minus 3x minus a negative 5, which is positive 5, and 4 plus 5 is 9 and 9 minus 3x is the composition g composed with f at x. Now, to answer the question, are they commutative? The composition is not commutative in this case. What we found is that the f of g of x is not the same as the g of f of x. For example, two, we're looking at f, g, and h, and we want to find a rule for each of the following. We also want to state the domain for each function. For a, f of g of x 
is composing f of g of x. So, so we're going to take the f function, which is x squared minus 3x. And in place of the parentheses, we're going to substitute the g of x function. That's the inside. So 1 plus 1 divided by x plus 2. And simplifying all of that, we've got 1 over x plus 2. I'm going to square the top. It's 1 squared is 1. And leave the bottom as it was. Multiply the 3 times the 1. Puts the 3 in the numerator. And we've got x plus 2. So to combine those two terms, I need this dot denominator to have another factor of x plus 2. So we'll use a well-chosen 1, x plus 2 divided by x plus 2, and combine those two terms. So we'll end up with 1 minus 3x minus 6, all divided by x plus 2 squared. And if we combine um, the 1 and the negative 6, that'll give us, what, negative 5? And if we take the negative out of each term, that would be a negative and a 3x plus 5. They also want us to state the domain. So the domain of this function would be all reals except x can't be negative 2. So writing that in interval notation is negative infinity to negative 2 and then negative 2 to positive infinity. So this is our domain of the composite of f of g of x. Working the opposite way, the g of f of x, we're going to write down the g function and plug the f of x function into the g function. Well, the g function is 1 divided by x plus 2. So in the place of x, we're substituting the entire function f of x, which was x squared minus 3x. So combining those terms, we could end up with, let's see, x squared minus 3x plus 2. We could factor that. x minus 2 times x minus 1. So this is our f of g of x, or I'm sorry, g of f of x. And the domain of g of f of x would have to be everything except positive 1 and positive 2. So in interval notation, from negative infinity to 1, we're skipping over 1. From 1 to 2, we're skipping over 2 and 2 to infinity because both positive 1 and positive 2 are vertical asymptotes. They cause division by 0. In part c, we want to do f of h of x, and notice h of x is the square root. So to compose f of h of x, we're going to have a limiting factor with the square root function on the x squared minus 3x portion. When we substitute square root of x, we have that limit that the square root domain only works for 0 to infinity. If you think about the square root function looking like that. So we have that as an issue on stating our domain. The f of h of x, when you square the square root, you've eliminated the square root in that first term. So we got x minus 3 square roots of x. This is our composite function. But the domain is only going to work for 0 to infinity on that composite. We're going to have something similar on the h of f of x. So the h of f of x, we're going to take the square root function is our outer function, and we're substituting x squared minus 3x is our f of x function. And to consider what the domain would be, we have to think about the argument x squared minus 3x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So when we factor the left side, we're going to 
think about x has to be greater than or equal to 0, and x has to be greater than or equal to 3. So these are our domain issues, which makes the domain of h of f of x from negative infinity to 0, including 0, and then from 3 to infinity. For example 3, we're looking at interpreting from graphs the composite function. For part a, the f of g of 3. So we want to go look at our graph, the g of 3, that's this graph down here, the g of 3 is 1. We know that the g of 3 is 1, so the f of 1, and now we're looking at the f function at 1, so the f of 1 is 2, which makes our f of g of 3 equal 2. For example b, the f of g of 1, so the g, looking on the g graph, the g of 1 is 3, so this portion is 3, the f of g of 1, the g of 1 is 3, and then the f of 3 looks like 2. So here the f of 3 is 2, and x is 3, y is 2 on our f function. c is a little trickier. We're going to multiply two composites together. First let's find the g of 4. The g of 4 is 0. And then next let's find the f of 1. So the f of 1 is 2. The next step would be to evaluate the f of 0. So the f of 0 is 4. And then find the g of 2. The g of 2 is 2. And we're multiplying 4 times 2 gives us 8. So the composite of those two and the product of their com compositions gives us 8. On part D, the f of negative 1 looks like 6, and I want the g of 3 here, so the g of 3 is 1, but we need to find the f of 1. So we have 6 in the numerator, and the f of 1 is 2. 6 divided by 2 gives us 3 for our composite. That's a quotient. The f of g of 4. So rewriting that, the f of g of 4. The g of 4 is 0, and I think we said earlier the f of 0 was 4. Yes, it is. So the f of 0 is 4. And here, finally, we have the g of f of 2. The f of 2, got to go back and look at our graph. The f of 2 is 0. And then the g of 0, the g of 0 is 4. Okay, that's not so bad. Moving on, when you decompose a composite function, you're finding the components. So oftentimes it's good to know how we could undo a function. So one way you could do this is in part A, if you look at it, you see you've got something being squared, and that something is the inside function. That's our g of x, and then the outside function is our f of x. That would be x squared. For part b, we could say the outside is 1 over something, 1 over x, and the inside was substitute x minus 5. <clears throat> For c, the inside function is x plus 2, and we plugged that into a square root function. And then for d, the hardest one of all, it kind of looks like you have this x minus 2 is our inside, and then the outside would be x squared minus 4x 
let's see, x squared minus 4x plus 5. And where the x variables were, we substituted x minus 2. So that's not so hard. In example 5, let h of x be the square root of 3x squared plus 1. Write h as a composition of functions in two different ways. I actually found three different ways we could do this. So one way I said is if h of x, well, let me straighten that up a minute. I said if h of x is, is the f of g of x, then f of x could be the square root, and g of x could be the inside function, 3x squared plus 1. I also said, thought about it this way, if f of x is the square root of 3x plus 1, then g of x could be x squared. And then the third way I thought about it, what if f of x was the square root of x plus 1, and then the inside function was 3x squared. So there's three different ways we could compose or decompose that function h of x. And then our last example, let's say Jim plants wheat on his farm in Kansas, and the function w of a gives the amount of wheat in bushels, that he expects to harvest if he plants wheat on A acres of land. When the wheat is harvested, Jim can calculate the amount of money, M, in dollars that he will earn from selling W bushels of wheat with the function M of W. We want to explain the meaning of W of 5 is 275. So I would say that means Jim plants five acres. So he's going to plant five acres of wheat. And his yield from that planting would be 275 bushels. So he yields 275 bushels from, of wheat. From the land. Explain the meaning of m of 65 equals 550. So what did m stand for? Let's go back and reread. When the wheat is harvested, Jim can calculate the amount of money in dollars that he earns from selling w bushels of wheat, m of w. So this is the money from the amount of wheat he sells. That means we've discovered Jim earns 500, what, $550 from the sale of 65 bushels of wheat. From the sale, whoop, can't talk and write at the same time. From the sale of 65 bushels of wheat that he harvested. And then the very last one, explain the meaning of m of w of 4 equals 2100. So in this case, Jim plants that the w was the amount of wheat he expects to harvest if he plants a acres. So in this case, he plants four acres of wheat and he earns $2,100 from his harvest. So we want to write a sentence about that. So I think that's the end of our lesson for the first day of Lesson 7 in Unit 2. I'll see you tomorrow.